Hello, I'm Becky. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to make some cheese scones and these are rather nice because they have extra cheese on the top. So that top piece is the one that everybody fights over. So I've got the oven on to gas six, which is 200 Celsius, 180 if your oven is a fan oven and 400 degrees Fahrenheit if you're in America. And I'm going to use a medium sized baking tray and I've cut a new piece of this wonderful non-stick silicon liner which is washable. They say it can go in the dishwasher. I've never done that. I'd be frightened of it dropping down and melting, I think. Um, so I wash it in the washing up bowl, but it's very, very good and you can reuse it over and over again. So that's a brand new one today. Now, in my mixing bowl, I've got 250 grams of self-raising flour. And to that, I'm going to add one teaspoon of mustard powder, dried mustard powder. That's that. Then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt. Um, mustard powder, remember that that is an allergen, so if you're not sure about the people you're going to give these to, I would leave the mustard powder out, to be honest with you. Half a teaspoon of salt, which sounds like a lot, but that is to help bring out the flavour of the cheese. Nowadays, cheese is not wonderfully strong like it used to be. And also a pinch of cayenne pepper. And the easiest way is just to shake a bit in your hand and put it in. So, we need 50 grams of either margarine or butter. Because you've got cheese in here, and quite a lot of cheese, I would use margarine, but if you don't have it, then butter's fine. So that goes in and we rub them together. Just give the um, mustard and the cayenne a bit of a mix and then start to rub the margarine and the flour together. Fingertips, lift, rub, drop, lift, rub, drop. And the reason that you use your fingertips is because they're cooler than your hands. If you used your palms, you would melt the margarine and it would all go very oily. So it's just the fingertips mix it round and eventually you'll finish up with something that looks like breadcrumbs. Here we are. Very little on my palms. To that we're going to add our grated cheese and I have got over here 125 grams that I grated earlier. Just watch it all go on the worktop. I wouldn't be tempted to use ready grated from the supermarket. You can buy it in a bag and because it's each little piece of cheese is coated in potato starch and that will make your mixture drier so you're going to have to have more liquid to make everything stick together. So just use a regular piece of strong cheddar and grate that and put three quarters roughly in your bowl. Bit of a guess here. I think that's probably about three quarters. Get that mixed in. And then to make a dough, we're going to use an egg. So I like to crack an egg into a bowl just to make sure I don't get any shell. Sharp tap. Open it up. No shell. And to that, I'm going to add some milk, four tablespoons of milk. Four tablespoons of milk and mix it together with your fork. I've got a bit more milk at the side here just in case this isn't enough. So that goes in all at once. And then we stir with our blunt knife. And I haven't got my rubber mat under the bowl today because I want to be able to turn the bowl as I stir. We're aiming to get a soft dough. Some people put parmesan in their cheese scones. You could do that, have a mixture of cheddar and parmesan. You just need something that has a, a nice bite. And in the old days, market traders used to sell something called mousetrap cheese which I'm sure people probably originally did use to trap mice, but it had a lovely strong bite. So now we knead this into a ball, and you can probably see that that is sticking. We've got some 
loose bits, but if we keep turning it over and pressing, it will all stick together. I've lost a bit on the floor there. There. Now, we need to put a little bit of flour on the work surface. Not too much. And take that out of the bowl. Now this will make 10 scones if you use a cutter like that. That's six centimetres or two and a quarter inches. And for savoury things, you really should use a plain edged cutter. The fluted one is for sweet things. And again, we're not going to use a rolling pin. We're going to just flatten this down until it's two centimetres thick. If they're too thin, they just won't rise and you'll finish up with things that look like biscuits. So that's my, I think that's about two centimetres. And actually what I'm going to do is cut mine into wedges and I'm going to make eight that way. So in half, in quarters, and then each one again. I'll put those on the tray. Keep them in a circle, but they mustn't quite touch because they're going to rise and you need to leave room for that to happen. Now doing it this way, there's no wastage. Often if you, if you use a cutter, you find that at the end you've got a little tiny bit that isn't enough to make a scone. Right, now, the next thing is to have a little bit more milk. Two bottles there. And a brush. Brush the top of each one. And this is why it's important to um, line your tin with greaseproof or something because this milk will burn onto your tray and make a bit of a mess. So really it saves washing up if you do this. So each one has some milk then some of this leftover cheese on the top. Now it looks a bit of a mess but don't worry about that because actually when they're cooked and they're off the tray they'll look lovely. So they go in the oven now for 15 to 20 minutes until they're golden brown. They've had 16 minutes now. And they should come off here quite easily. But they are very, very hot. Now they've had a few more minutes to cool down because they were so hot, it's very difficult to get them apart. So some of these I can just prise apart now and cut through the cheese like that and get them onto the cooling rack. see how well they've risen. You don't get that sort of split round the middle that you get with sweet scones, but you can imagine it's quite a, a different, heavier mixture with all that cheese. Anyway, well, I'll separate those in a minute. So, they'll cool down and um, be delicious when they're fresh. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Please like it, share it, and then subscribe. And you can find all of the recipes on the website, www.becky-bakes.com. Bye for now.